point, we've got two grown daughters who are both amazing, both married. We've got four grandchildren between the ages of four and 12, uh, including our one daughter and her husband, who is Royal Canadian Air Force, and they're currently stationed in Colorado Springs, Colorado. So we're watching two of our grandkids grow up by the computer. But we love it. Now this group of fantastic people in my life is what keeps me up at night. It's also the reason I get up in the morning. But when I do think about it, I think about my grandson Evan. He's four years old. He's going to face a world that we can't even imagine today. He's going to face challenges and opportunities that don't even exist yet. I'm more excited and worried about his future than I am my own. But when I think about the changes in life that I've seen, that also amazes me. And when I add to the fact that right now, my wife Deb and I are, are helping to take care of her 90-year-old father, and we think that's an honor and a privilege. He's 93 years old, he's raised four daughters, and he served our country valiantly in World War II and helped liberate Holland. That's a little bit about who I am. One of the things I also believe in is giving back to the community at large. We do that together as a group. We've worked with my, uh, with my partners in my business and the associates in my business. We've worked with the two local hospice facilities. We've worked with Waterloo Region Suicide Prevention. We've worked with the Habitat for Humanity, um, the Guelph to Goderich Rail Trail, and the KW Legacy Scholarship Fund. So we believe that that's important too, is giving back to this great community. Now on the flip side, to fund all of this, all these activities and to help take care of my family, there has to be time for work. So I worked in a factory in my younger days and learned how that went. I went into construction for 20 years and did that as well. And then a good friend introduced me to the direct marketing world. And then I realized that I could work and I could help people and I didn't have to have a boss. And I'm sure everyone in the room knows what boss stands for, right? Double S-O-B spelled backwards. <laughs> so I took all those lessons from those things and I mixed it with a work ethic that I'd always had and good hard work and created, created my own company. And 10 years later after you know a merger here and adding a partner there, my wife and I now run our own firm with a group of, another group of like-minded individuals, including Gordon Melville, who I count as a friend, and we're very, very happy. And we all believe the same things, that any relationship we build has to be a win-win-win, and the client has to come first. So all in all, a fairly full and satisfying life, helping our daughters and our grandkids on one side and aging on the other side. But what happens in a busy life when someone wants to throw a wrench into your business? Two years ago, a cancer diagnosis changed our world and threatened my wife 35 years. So, I want to tell you a story of her, her story, a story of courage and strength and perseverance that reminds me daily that you can do amazing things if you believe and you keep moving forward. I remember these days as if it was yesterday. It was Thursday, February the 23rd, 2016. I was in the last week of the busiest season in our, in our industry. I'm running around like my hair's on fire. I had done two appointments that morning and had two more that afternoon. I'm coming back to the office after uh, my lunch appointment and I get a text from my wife that she can't catch her breath and she thinks she needs to go to the hospital. Now on a side note, I've learned that apparently once a woman learns how to text, she forgets how to dial the damn phone. But the only problem with what she's told me just at this point is that she's 25 kilometers away. She's out in Wellesley helping our daughter um, and she's watching the grandkids. At this point, we lived in Kitchener, my office was in Waterloo, and it was going to take me a half an hour to get there. So fortunately, I called my daughter, scrambled to her home to take care of her mom, and said, I'll be there as quick as I can. 30 minutes later, I arrive in Wellesley to find the volunteer fire department from Wellesley and an ambulance in my daughter's front yard ready to take my, my wife to an emergency room. We get to the emergency room and people are lined up like cordwood, which is kind of a usual thing to go. And after about six hours and a couple of tests, 
the uh, emergency room doctor um, comes to us and says, well, I'm going to pass you guys over to a surgeon right away. And the surgeon comes and shares the x-rays with us, shows us the, uh, the mass in her abdomen, abdomen, and prepares us for the fact that we're going to have to go to London. And we all knew what, we knew what that meant at that point. And then we spent the next five days at uh, Grand River Hospital with more tests and more procedures and finally given uh, an official diagnosis of stage three ovarian cancer. Deb was released from the hospital on the um, 28th of February and with a diagnosis in hand and with the knowledge that we had a plan, um, we finally got the chance to tell our daughters and the rest of the family what we knew. And that was a tough time because my youngest daughter is in Colorado Springs and my wife's older sister and her best friend were in Florida and they weren't there to, uh, to, to help us. But thanks to um, luck and stories that I've heard from elsewhere, we were very, very lucky. The following week we were in London meeting with the gynecological, gynecological oncologist. Say that three times fast. <laughs> And he laid out, there was just absolutely no doubt in his mind. He, he looked at the test, he looked at the x-rays, he talked to me and my wife and said, we're doing this, 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 and this. And six months from now, you'll be back and you'll have more hair than me. And he was right. But that made us both feel assured that we knew he, he had a plan and he was going to take care of us through this. Um, so one week later, we started nine weeks of chemotherapy. End of the month, Deb had... Uh, invasive surgery, and then nine more weeks of chemotherapy. So I can honestly say that the spring and summer of 2017 was pretty tough on our family. And just because that wasn't enough on our lives, we had to move her mom into the long-term care facility and she wasn't happy about it. We had to get dad used to living on his own. He didn't care for it. Um, and of course, we didn't tell either of them about Deb's conditions. We didn't want to worry them. We sold our house. We moved out of our house, even though our new house wasn't going to be ready for three months. And we just, we had to keep moving forward. But what became apparent to me the minute this all started was something that I already knew. She was a woman of remarkable strength. I knew, I knew she was strong. She had raised two daughters and her husband. She made the decision on day one that cancer wasn't going to beat her. She had family that needed her, she had daughters that loved her, son-in-laws that respected her and sometimes feared her, and she had grandkids that absolutely adored her. And she had a husband who'd been by her side for 37 years and wanted to grow old together. She endured those 18 treatments like a champ. She put on an itchy wig so she'd go visit her parents and not have them worried. She packed and supervised the move of our home and she, had, and she assured everyone that she was gonna win this fight and wasn't going anywhere. And she was right. 23 months later, we sit here tonight. Deb's just had her fourth clear appointment with the oncologist. Excuse me. We aren't, we aren't looking back. Um, we've been to, um, and hopefully our kids from Colorado will be home this summer. Now, life has changed for us. We try and live every day in the moment. We still plan for the future, but we understand that this planning has to be balanced, both good and bad. We've traveled to Chicago, Colorado Springs. We saw Queen last year. We saw Come From Away twice. This year we'll do Mexico and, and do Newfoundland. And there's also, been, there's also been tough times along the mix. We lost mom last year and we took her ashes home to Holland. We moved dad into the long-term care facility and he's 93 and he misses her terribly, but He's got the same strength, that's where my wife got it from, and he goes on day by day. So I don't wanna, I, I wanna borrow a couple of lines. One of them I've heard lots of times before is that thoughts are things. And when you start with a positive outlook, you add a step-by-step -step plan, and coupled with her strength and her courage, you can pull through anything. So, in closing, I would like to challenge each and every one of you to go confidently, always move towards your dreams, secure in the knowledge that the same wind blows on us all, the winds of change, the winds of challenge, and the winds of opportunity, and the difference is the set of your sails. So set your sail with courage, use your strength and the strength of the people around you, 
and you'll get through the storms ahead, and you'll arrive at the destination proud of what you accomplished. Thank you.